Okay, this one is specifically for Michelle and everybody else. But, hey, Michelle, my little fairy friend. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about the magical creatures that are in 5D, specifically about dragons, because dragons are probably my personal favorite. And the reason why is because dragons are unique in the magical creature in this creation. Mainly because dragons are from outside this creation. And dragons and I hang out a lot because a dragon, <coughs> not all dragons because there's all different kinds of dragons, but the big ones that you guys probably think about the most that are really, really, really big. Um, uh, now all the horror stories about them eating people and, and burning people up with fire and acid and all that stuff. That's not true. But all of the magical creatures, just about humans, have made horror stories out of them, which are not true. So if you look at the magical creatures in your um, in your fairy tales, if you take that information and take out all the negative stuff, you'll get a pretty good picture of what they're like in real life, what they're really like. Because uh, in order to go to 3D, of course, they twisted them into very negative, scary beings. Well, dragons are really, really big. They're even bigger probably than you think they are. But they are really, really big. And they can fly from creation to creation to creation. So um, they can move through time and space in the time and space places um, very easily. So they don't... They operate outside of time and space, but they can be inside time space in this creation at certain vibrations. Now, they also could lower themselves to the third dimension, but they don't. Because in this particular creation, that was kind of an agreement that was made. That they would go down to a certain level, which was 5D. And then below that, they really don't show themselves. It's not like they're not here. They are, but they don't allow themselves to be seen. And dragons are, they do, uh, they are extremely very, 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 very wise. And they live in their form, in that physical form, for a very, very, very long time. Even though that's hard to explain, outside of <laughs> time, space, and everything is in the now. But they actually go and experience the different, you know, I told you that I go and look at different creations and look at it from different perspectives, more as a, from, as an energy being. Well, dragons will do it in physical form and they'll actually experience that creation all over the place. And they move very quickly through all the different creations and they experience and collect data and experience in all these different creations in the form that is available in these different creations. So they've got a lot of experience, a lot of data. That thing that they are the wise ones, it couldn't be any more true. As a matter of fact, I would say, uh, even though they're not of this creation, because they've been around for a very long time, and they tend to be uh, like you are a being, this entity that you inhabiting this human body that came out of source. A lot of them came out of source as dragons. And they've been that way the whole time. So that is just their preference. So they really are magnificent beings. And uh, yeah, and interestingly enough, I don't know if I've told you guys this before, but Stephanie has a friend who's who has a little boy who is a dragon. He's a dragon that came to be in human form, which I didn't even think that was possible. This child is, I think he's about two, and he's huge. He's way, way bigger than he should be for his age, and he they're having so much trouble with him because he really does not listen to anybody else, and he just, you know, just does things. And they never will be able to control him because he's a dragon. I love him. We call him Draco. Um, anyway, magnificent humanoid being that I didn't even think was possible. But then I'm always looking around and finding things here that are not possible. And um, I don't know about the rest of you, 
but the I had a real hard time in New York City and New Jersey um, with magical creatures. There's very few of them that were hard to find. So I went to uh, Central Park, and it was like there was what had happened. I can't remember if I did a video on this or if I just did a video to put on the long version of my trip, but I'm going to go ahead and stick it here just because I think, Michelle, I think you'll be interested in it. So I went in, stepped into to, uh, Central Park, and there was a, a tree over there, which immediately I went over to the tree to talk to the tree because I'd spent some time in New York City, and it's kind of overwhelming uh, as far as the energies go. And I went over there and had to talk with the tree. And by that time, of course, the magical creatures, specifically the fairies, found out I was there. And I went over to another group of trees where the fairies were all kind of congregated. And I sat down and I had a conversation with them. And basically what happened was Central Park is beautiful. And it's full of magical creatures. But what happened is they just kind of hung out in Central Park. And as New York City grew, they it kind of grew around Central Park and the magical creatures were pushed inside or outside of that m metroplex and by New York City I mean every all the the city around it not just New York City Manhattan all the burbs um Inglewood all the New Jersey line of city the whole thing the whole shebang and it's really 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 big and that just grew and grew and grew and it separated the Central Park magical beings from the rest of the magical beings on the planet. And everywhere else on the planet, the magical beings can communicate back and forth and they move back and forth very quickly, run around the whole planet, except in Central Park. And they had been separated and they couldn't find their way out to more nature because it really, they, they moved through nature and they couldn't find it. And uh, they were just playing in Central Park and were not paying attention as time went by, so to speak. And then they couldn't find the energetic way to get back to nature. And they were really upset about that. You know, nobody's upset in Fifth Dimension with magical creatures, but that's the word I'm going to use. And so I sent an energy line out to the closest forest and so that they could follow it. So immediately they went running out and running back in and um, connected with all the rest of the magical creatures on the planet. And they were very, very happy about that. But still in the city part around where normally I can go about anywhere and there's some kind of, especially fairies, fairies will show up anywhere, but they weren't there. They weren't there in the city. They weren't there in Inglewood where Terry is. They weren't anywhere. As a matter of fact, outside Tara's house, uh, I was there for days before I even saw a single bird. And it was very cold, but still there, there are birds everywhere. No matter what time of year it is, there's birds everywhere. There's animal, there's life somewhere in the desert, in the cold. There's life, uh, na natural life. And there wasn't in Inglewood. Um, they, I didn't see... For days, I didn't see anybody even walking a dog or heard a dog bark. At night, I didn't see cats wandering. It was just creepy, weird. There's a lot creepy going on in that place. But it was very interesting for a new experience. But I was able to connect to the ones in uh, Central Park. And they had been, really, there was a wall around them. So they didn't interact really much with the city at all. It was like a, a separate place between Central Park and the city itself, where there was a, definitely a line. Uh, the people that walked through there, they were almost walking in a bubble so that they, I don't think that most of them even felt the magical creatures at all, which most people, if you go out in nature, they people will talk about seeing something out of the corner of their eye, and a lot of times that's a magical creature. Sorry, I bit my tongue, and so I'm talking funny. But anyway, um, for me, especially since the first, I've seen a lot more magical creatures interacting. What I'm also seeing is right, right on target, two weeks after uh, the New Year's Eve thing, I started to see the geckos and the pigeons kind of panicking a bit. 
and really the fourth dimensional stuff start to come in a lot stronger. Anyway, that's what I've seen. And, you know, there was the whole thing with what Trump said and the missile thing that went off. And there was one more thing that happened right at the same time. Well, at the same time that was happening, um, the FBI was closing in on a bunch of people, uh, the Pizzagate crew. Uh, which are very directly related to the to the reptilians and the geckos and the Illuminati and all those people. Uh, at the same time, it looks like the the banking system is kind of in trouble with the whole crypto coin thing. That's young people coming and give, putting in a new way of dealing with money and taking those guys out. All kinds of things. Uh, I have to say that I've watched the pigeons. Now, the pigeons are the ones that put together the... the uh, more of the Galactic Federation groups and something they did that was absolute pure genius was this hybrid children thing. Now, in reality, um, beings have been coming and collecting genetic data from humans forever since the beginning and <clears throat> using that genetic data to meld with their own because we're just like a gold mine of, of uh, genetic vibrational information. So that's nothing new. But what they've done is they've, because 3D caused a lot of vibra uh, family sp splitting apart and a lot of not community, community kind of got killed, part of the lowering the vibration into 3D. There's a longing, especially uh, for star seeds, for family and oneness and 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 to be back with that and so what the pigeons did you already know what the geckos have done the geckos have controlled the money the education the medical the blah 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 forever uh for a very 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 long time and the pigeons what they've done is they've incorporated most of the angels and all of the other planets you know uh the pleiadians come in to get you or uh, you know all that kind of stuff and the and all of that's true, by the way. There are absolute planets out there with civilizations that you certainly can be attracted to, you can be a part of. Um, there's so much genetics in you that you could probably match with any of them, to be quite frank. But that is all a part of 4D. And what the pigeons did is they took and they hyped up this hybrid chick children thing, and people feel that longing. And especially starseeds can feel that closeness. And the thought of them having hybrid children that they can, that are already there, that they can merge with, that already understand their weird parts. You know, starseeds are weird stuff. And that they already want them as a parent. Then it's very, very, very tempting. And a lot of people are absolutely going towards it, that they want that family. They want that that closeness they want that um that planet that gets them and uh so as far as i'm concerned pigeons just like the geckos pure genius pure genius but like i've said before and there's nothing wrong with that anybody can uh stay with the geckos and get in with them and all of the stuff that they do or you can hang out with the pigeons go to a star system or a planet and hang out with them uh Go hang out with your hybrid children. But ultimately, for 5D people, people are going to 5D. Those are all, you have to make judgments to decide which one to get. You have to stay in, um, you have to stay attached to being a, a mother. You attach to the title of them being your children. None of that is 5D. Those are all titles and they separate us. And that's not unity. So... Just a heads up to Michelle. Um, we'll talk to you any day, any time about the magical creatures. I know that you see them a lot. So do I. So does Stephanie. And uh, we're seeing them more and more clearly now. And it's a very big relief because they're just great fun to play with. Um, I mean, as far as feeling relief for 3 and 4D, uh, 5D creatures are the best at just playing. That's, that's who we play with. Because they're just magical and they're fun and there are no rules. So um, glad to see, glad to see that interaction, and very happy to see you seeing a dragon. Um, I love the dragons, 
And for the rest of you, just a heads up, you're going to see a lot of uh, the get-go's in a panic. They're going to try to cause all kinds of anger and fear. Uh, they're going to step it up. It's been bad for decades, but it's going to get way worse because they're losing. Well, they've lost, really. But So they're going to step it up. They're going to do whatever it takes to scare you or make you angry at another group or another person or another whatever. As long as you're in judgment and in, in, as long as you consider yourself a whatever, a woman, a doctor, a whatever, as long as you tag yourself with something, then they will have something to use against you because they'll pit you against somebody else. If you don't have any of that, then they they have nothing to go with. They have no way of making you afraid. If you don't believe in good and bad, if you believe you're a creator God, then there's nothing they can use to, to cause you to fear at all. You totally trump everything that they can do with that simple stuff. You guys play your game. I'm a creator God. I choose what I'm going to do. They lose all power. The second that you fall for any of their games, then on the gecko side, then uh, you'll stay in 4D. The same is true with the pigeons. If you have to, if, if making you feel better, you have to have a planet or you have to have a family or you have to have um, any of that kind of thing to feel whole and complete, then they'll get you on that side. The second that you go, no, I get this. This is all a game. No matter what I see, it's all a game. None of it is who I truly am. And I'm going back to being one with everything where there is no difference between any of us. Then you go to 5D and then you go home. Okay? Alrighty then? Okay. Um, I do want to say one more thing because I've got a really good analogy. For the star seeds that are searching for happiness, and I've never told you to be happy, ever. I've told you to be happier, never happy. And I've got, an, I've got a good analogy for this. Where you came from, think of it like a five-star resort where you get anything you want, everything is perfect in every way. If you want some kind of food, it's brought to you. Your house is, I mean, your your room is perfect to your spec specifications. The Somebody comes and cleans everything for you magically. Everything you want is magically there for you at all times. Everything that you want and dream of is there for you, okay? Well, you didn't book a ride at the five-star resort. You booked a ride here at a completely different experience. You came to a third world country where there's no plumbing, where there's no central heat and air, where there's barely enough food. And what you're doing is you booked this room. You came here for this lifetime. And now you're sitting in the middle of your, your third world country with this other experience screaming and hollering because you want the five-star experience. Well, you're not going to get it. This isn't a five-star resort. This isn't home. This is a different kind of experience. And the sooner you get that, the happier you'll be. Now, in that third world experience, that <clears throat> you have things that you can look at and experience that are magnificent. The ability for for, and we're going to use our analogy, the ability for people to survive in that kind of circumstance, a building of, of, of uh, them to build with no money, the building, the way that they can survive with very little, that is an experience that you can honor. You may not like it. You may want out as much as fast as you can, but you can honor it. So maybe that analogy helps a little bit. In the meantime, you will not find happy with the humans. You will not. Everything that they do doesn't make any sense to you. It will never make you happy to hang with the humans. As close as you can get to finding happy will be in animals and with nature where everything flows together beautifully. That is the vibration that you're used to that everything just flows beautifully. But even in nature, you will find things that will be upsetting to you because in nature, in 3 and 4D, they're still killing and eating each other. But it will be much closer to that five-star resort than being with humans will be. But when we're with humans and what they do, you can look around and see the magnificent of magnificence of this experience. 
When I went to New York City, I was amazed at the bridges, the buildings. I know about when these things were built, what they would have had to do in order to create these. These little tiny humans were able to create these magnificent structures with their own imagination and pure deep brute force. And just figuring things out, that's pretty magnificent. Now, at home, all we got to do is think of them and we can have things far prettier. But the fact that they did it in physical form with figuring things out is magnificent. You can look and be happier in that moment. You really can. But you're not going to feel home. You're not going to have the five-star resort here. So as long as you are struggling to try to find it, screaming, stomping your feet and saying, no, I will have the five-star resort here, you're going to cause yourself a great deal of discomfort. And as the vibrations raise and you're, and you're watching the geckos and the pigeons duke it out and try to get your attention because they both want you, they will, they will want you very bad on their side. And these two sides are going to spread out a lot. And both of them are going to want you on their side. So if you can't understand the game, if you can't focus on accepting where you are, and instead you scream and holler and want what you want, even though it's not available, then you will be at risk to going one way or the other or them taking you. You must focus on understanding everything that I've said to you in the videos so far in order to get to 5D. Now, whoever sent me that video that that actually said a lot of the stuff that I've said whenever I died on the different layers, would you please re resend it to me? Because I can't find that email, too many emails here trying to catch up with everything. So would you send that to me again? Because I really want to um, upload that to one of my videos so I can show people. Because they don't call it fifth dimension. They call it fifth something else. And they did break down those other things uh, similarly to what I've seen. However, of course, they've got rules with it. and You've got to have somebody lead you through all of these dimensional layers which of course i don't believe in uh, because you don't need anybody but you you're god you can do all of it yourself you just got to figure out how to do it so if you'd send that back to me i'd appreciate it uh, i really apologize i don't remember who it was but you know who you are you'll listen to this and then send it to me so yeah that's several topics at once but uh yeah keep your eye out for the magical creatures they're much more available than they were before the first and they're ready to play and you can get uh, a lot happier if you with the moments that you plug into those little people they're always in nature though you're not going to see them in the middle of a city you're not going to see them uh, they might try to a fairy might try to get your attention when you're at work depending upon where you work and what you do for a living uh, especially if you're a singer or dancer or something in art but it basically if you're if you've got a regular job where you think a lot you're probably not going to see them so try to get out into nature try to get to the water out in the sun and you'll see them more more often that way and be open to them they're ready to play whenever you are okay guys all right uh huge hugs i love you guys so much and i'll talk to you later bye now